I'm Kevin Triplett, and this is Nick Suter from Germany. I'm from Austin. Peace, bros. We're going to be uh, tag teaming today. And uh, this is a Ruby test case, a case study on if you have something written in Ruby and you don't like the features of it, go make a library that makes it much better, make your life simpler. So that's what Nick did. And I found it, fell in love with it, and wanted to share it with you all. But this is really a, a good strength of Ruby. So I know a few people out there probably do web applications. And you probably recognize MVC. And of course, we love MVC. Anytime you can organize your code, it's good. Do it. And so that gives us skinny controllers, fat models. Oh, yeah, but we don't have a, anything for views. So maybe we, we hate me. We just like MC, it seems like. Well, I want to change that. I want to kind of share what I've found this just super exciting because I'm writing a pretty complicated web app. And I wanted to use Ajax and Webby 2.0 and all that good stuff because it just makes the That's user's it. experience much better. It gives you sexy views when I'm about to present to you. And that's really not only sexy for the users who are using your application, but sexy for y'all because it makes your views very organized. Um, you'll see in just a second that what we do is with components. Oh, well, I forgot components are dead. Starting in Rails 2.0, they, they killed render component because according to the Rails docs, you don't want to use components as a way of separating concerns inside of an application. I mean, you don't want to have reusable components inside your application. That's, that's just not a good way to do it. <laughs> components are a special purpose approach that can be replaced with better use of partials and filters. And I get that all the time. I say, why aren't views better? Well, just use partials and filters. It's no big deal. We do it all the time, right? Wrong. At least in my opinion, that just opinionated. So let's take Rails, for instance. Um, Rails gives you a nice organization. It has controllers, models, views. And inside the views are different controller directories. Say, for instance, users. It's pretty. You've got one file per action. Maybe you have a partial for, for handling the forms. Or maybe you're smart where you put the forms, edit, and new all in one file. It's really nice and organized. I love that. Oh, but then I've got this complicated application that schedules resources. It has users, equipment, uh, product. Um, this is the administration interface of tabs. Uh, in the tabs, there's forms and forms and forms. Ah, oh, crap. And this is where I ran into the wall. I said, oh, this is not going to work because it's just me doing this. I've got all these partials. And I tried to organize it by putting tab as the first word so that they would all show up in one place. Um, but then I had to have stuff for the tabs in other places because there are, are things nested within those partials. Ugh. And this is just one controller. For instance, in my application, I have uh, today's tasks. And that's not. That's not associated with that controller. It's on every page of my web app, because I want to be able to see what I'm supposed to be doing today, or what somebody's supposed to be doing. And so, OK. Somebody said, well, just put in a partial. Oh, that's fine. You can, you can do that. And, but then I got looking at the way you write a partial statement, and it's ugly. It's just ugly. Uh, it's, we're passing in a hash and a nested hash, not only that. Render is fine. Render is understandable. OK, passing in a partial, there's the partial name. And then if we have local variables, we pass it in, in, in a, another hash. But this doesn't look like the Ruby that I love in models or controllers even. So somebody said, well, just wrap it in a partial wrapper. If you don't like looking at a, a partial render statement, then just wrap it in a wrapper. And this is what somebody uh, gave to me. It's, it's kind of nice. And so you use it this way. Uh, it's still ugly because now we've got this non-standard way of calling a partial. Uh, it's, just, it's just still, I don't like it. It's, it's, I don't know. It's better. It's a little better. OK, what about variables? Like that task panel, there's a variable associated with that. It's not static. I get that from the database. So every controller has to be able to initialize that variable. Or if you want to do it, you can put it in the application controller. Uh, in Rails, 
and have a before filter so that when the application runs, it runs this filter, initializes that variable, and makes it a variable available for all of your uh, uh, control reviews. Oh yeah, but if you don't like globals, and that's a good reason because where is that global? Where does it exist? Is it gonna be mucked with in some other way? Um, it's just not a good solution. It is a solution. So the, the idea for Ruby, and I'm sorry making this a Trojan horse, it's kind of like we're talking about Rails, but it's really a good <laughs> example of how Nick took Ruby and made something very simple because he didn't like views. He didn't like the way that Rails implemented views. And so he created this library called uh, Cells, and it's your first step toward widgets, which is what Nick will talk about in the second half. It's a gem, which is really nice. That's the um, current standard. And not only Rails, but it's uh, works in Sinatra and soon Padrino. And this is the nice part. It actually has a test suite. A lot of Rails plugins and gems don't have good test suites, but um, it's being currently developed and added to, and that's, that's a really good sign. So what do, what do sales do? It gives you a new directory called sales. So again, that back to that organization, you know exactly where all your widgets are. It's in one directory, in the app directory. And not only that, but each one of your cells has a Ruby file plus a folder that you can put all of your view files in there for each one of the actions. So for instance, how that works is, originally we had this render partial thing, let's say today's task list. So you go to the console to generate your cell. It creates this uh, directory, unless it's already there. That's where all your cells reside. Nice organization, it creates the uh, Ruby file and we'll see that in just a second. And then it creates this other directory, and that's where all your view code resides. Again, really nice organization. There's um, the action or the state that I wanted to make a view for. I specified that on the uh, console line. And I also like Haml, so I pass in the Haml keyword. It works with almost all the uh, different display engines. All uh, engines that are uh, supported by Rails. And nice, okay, gives you tests. And, and you're gonna love that part. We'll get to that at the end of the presentation <laughs> because tests are very important. Okay, so now you call render cell, you pass it the, um, the cell um, sort of family or whatever, and the action or the state that you want to display. Now, what does that cell look like? It kinda looks like a controller. You can, call, you can use your helpers, your standard helpers, and there's the state. You can have multiple states in there so that you can draw different states for your, uh, your cell, depending on what, um, what is in. If, for this real simple case, we want to keep it real simple. You initialize a couple of variables that are going to be used in the view. And then this is nice. You call render. How many people get the double render error in, in Rails? It's, you can render as many cells as you want to go crazy. Cells within cells. You call render. And don't worry about double render error. And that's one of, the magic, uh, one of the magical, beautiful things that uh, Nick did in using Ruby. So back to um, the cell that I've got on all my web pages. There's the view code, and it's real nice. It's real contained. You can do everything you want to right there. It's not mixed in with a bunch of other junk. It's kind of like a partial, but it's in a nice uh, directory organization structure. And by the way, cells uh, can also be namespaced. So if you have a complicated web app, like mine is going to be by the time I'm finished with it, it'll have nested uh, directories and namespaced directories so that to keep things nice and organized. And then, of course, the Haml, this is the Haml code for generating HTML, and you can see what, what I'm doing to create that little, little widget there on the side. So this, I like it, I like it very much, and that's why I wanted to kind of present it to y'all. This, hopefully this may be worth the conference for some of y'all that are doing these kind of apps. Caching, uh, the nice thing about this, just we'll go this over quickly because we don't have a lot of time left, but uh, it doesn't really? do um, strict view caching, it does uh, no fragment caching. You can actually specify the cache that you want inside the cell. So for instance, in this case, if you have a shopping cart, you can say, well, it expires in 10 minutes. or you can call, you can pass it a block, and in that block you can do anything you want to to be able to expire the cache. Testing for the win. This is, I love this. You can test your cells in isolation. How many people can't test their partials? I mean, I love unit code testing, but 
I really can't get into uh, integration testing and, and view testing, but this is really simple. You ha just have a test file per cell, and in there you can test a state, render the HTML, and then check it, see if you got what you wanted. And it can't really get simpler than this. Ah, but there's more. Again, no double render error. You can nest cells within cells, call as many cells as you want to, go crazy. There's view inheritance where you, if you have a standard widget, but maybe you want to inherit that widget and change it on another controller, or another view, you can do that. Uh, it's very object oriented. Again, nested cells. And you can package your views, your, your cells, as an engine that can be passed between applications. So that's, that's handy if you want to share your work with somebody else. And now, but uh, Rails are very simple. And the really power of Rails is comes with a, a Podomo, which I don't know if Nick will tell you what a Podomo means, but maybe we'll leave that as an exercise for the reader. Yeah, you can actually Google it. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, this is going to be interactivity in the next step. Thanks, Kevin, for this um, great talk. What about some applause for this guy? <laughs> uh, it was for you. All right, so um, can you guys hear me? Because I can. Um, so um, we got that rendering part of, um, about cells. And I will talk about interactivity, how to make um, your cell um, act like a real widget, you know, where you can send um, data to the server and back and which um, updates on events and stuff like that. So basically, a Podomo is, um, that's the framework I'm going to talk about. It's, um, it sits on top of cells and um, it provides interactive widgets. And we also have some optional statefulness for those guys who want to have uh, fancy stateful widgets that keep their inner states and keep their structure. Usually, I don't need that. And then we have a very interesting event system in Apotomo, which we are going to discover now. And I really love, I started really loving Apotomo. So um, I did a, like a browser game with it, like a small example. And then there is some guy from Canada, Paul actually, who did a um, real complex backend application. So Apotomo is perfect for building rich user interfaces, like having uh, forms and different lists and, I don't know, all this fancy web 2.0 stuff. Then it's perfect for building dashboard applications in Rails. I mean, how do you do dashboards in Rails? Partials and Ajax and, yeah. And, um, yeah, that's a very um, new example I got from some user from, uh, I think he's from Monaco. He did some, um, some, uh, app some little widget about you can add nodes and you can sort and page these nodes and it's all handled in, with widgets and on uh, via Ajax. So um, our domain widget we are going to discuss today is uh, that um, tasks cell Kevin introduced. And I just added some uh, forms so you can um, add items. And it will um, check that item created in the database on the server side, of course, and will update the page as uh, a widget on the page. Yeah, that was yesterday, that beer, because uh, today I feel a little bit terrible. <laughs> I tried to follow uh, Tom's guidelines, like have friends, move to San Francisco, buy a Jeep, and fuck it up. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, meet nerds, talk to them, use GitHub, dr get drunk. Yeah, I mean, it was fun, but today, yeah, we'll talk about that later. All right, so let's uh, go through this uh, widget conversion progress step by step. <clears throat> Sorry. So keep in mind we got that cell and we got that form below that cell. And when I enter and click on new, it will update itself on the screen. So the first uh, task is to drink some water because I'm thirsty. The first task is to um, generate the widget. Usually um, there is a widget generator and I just pass test widget, the name of the widget I'm going to um, create, and some standard um, action display, and minus minus Hamel, because I like Hamel views. So it will create, stop out the widget class, and um, a standard view for the state I want to create. It's the same as a cell creation. Next part is the widget. So instead of deriving from cells, cell base, I derive from a Podomo widget. 
And then I have this action called display, which just um, <coughs> uh, looks through the database, finds all the tests I'm assigned to. This is a very a simple example, I know. And then it basically renders uh, the corresponding view, which is in uh, display HTML.haml. Next part is to um, write a view for that display method. And uh, yeah, you know that from cells. I mean, you, you've been watching it. The view is located in the tasks widget, app cells tasks widget actually, and then display.haml. What I'm doing here is I just um, let Portomo create some basic container for my widget. It's widget diff. And um, yeah, I iterate, I loop over the tasks and stop out that boring list. And uh, to get that widget into my controller, I use um, the controller class method has widgets. So this is something new to Rails. All the stuff you saw was like controllers. Has widget simply uh, yields a root widget and I attach my tasks widget, which I created, to that root widget. And I also pass an ID. That's the only requirement a Podomo has. So I call that widget my tasks. Any questions here? No. I, uh, I wanted to point out uh, one thing when I came across Podomo was the root. That was really um, a bit of a stumbling block for me. Root is just the uppermost widget. It's always there. It's, this, it's the default widget. It's empty. And you just add widgets, your widgets, to the root. Oh, yeah. yep. And so the root is just a, a place to hang all your widgets into. Yeah, usually um, a Podomo is made for having like 20 widgets and you can nest them and have real widget families. That's how I call it. But there is always that standard top, very top view, uh, widget root. And uh, to render that widget, that my tasks, the um, task list, I just use render widget in some layout or in some uh, view of my controller. And I pass the um, ID. So I reference it by ID. So that was rendering only. I mean, I told you we are going to discuss uh, how, to, um, how to react on form submits and stuff like that. So the first task is I have to, so here, here we got that list, and I will simply extend it with a form. So I use form tag. I create a HTML5 compatible um, unobtrusive JavaScript, a lot of buzzwords in a row, data event URL, that's a, a HTML5 attribute, and um, I use URL for event, which is an Apodomo helper method. And um, so Apodomo simply stops out some URL which will trigger the submit event. So you don't have to worry about what happens here. It's just a, a basic URL to trigger the submit event. Yeah, and then we got basic form stuff. So that's uh, pretty boring. By the way, I'll point out, don't execute this code because the indentation is too much on it. It's oh, yeah. I, <laughs> I took out a lot of parameters and stuff from, from, from Rares just to have a, a small example. So don't try this at home. All right, so we got the URL for event. You, you're going to use that a lot because you want Apodomo to create um, URLs for you. And then I have to add some JavaScript. I Sorry for that horrible slide, but usually when I do talks about Apodomo, everybody is like, ah, Apodomo is a JavaScript library. It's not. It's just using JavaScript to transport um, events and um, the content back to the page. So I use jQuery in this example. You're open to use WriteJS, Prototype, MooTools, whatever. So what I'm doing, I just catch the form I just created. Oh, that way. Um, and attach a submit event handler. I mean, that's just, I tell the form when you are submitted, execute that AJAX request. In that AJAX request, I, I'm a good unobtrusive JavaScript guy, so I'll just take the um, data event URL from the form that's created by Apodomo and um, send that back to the, to the server. So um, basically, Apodomo does this, um, provides me this trigger URL in the data event URL and processes the request and sends back some content. All right, so I had this form. I enter some stuff. I click Submit. JavaScript will send that stuff to, um, to Rails or to Apodomo. So how does my form know that it has to update? And that's the point where um, the event system in Apodomo comes into play. So I'm triggering a Submit event in Rails. How can I catch that in my widget? Let's go back to the code. There's a nice method called response to event. Uh, I was about to say response to what? 
response to event, and I say, if you encounter an event of type submit, just execute your process action or state. So when my widget sees that submit event, it's going to execute process, so I have to write process as well. This is nothing more than a simple um, form, proce oops, form processing uh, state. I grab the, the text that was entered in the form, and then I save, the, save it to a new task. And then I execute my display method again. That's what state arrow display does. So I basically get all the, new, get all the tasks, the updated list, call render, so I have an have a updated view about my items, and then I call replace, which will instruct a Podomo or your widget to update itself on the screen, take that content from display and put it back on the page. So this is very handy and um, this is the only part where a Podomo um, is doing a little bit of JavaScript. Yeah, and what we get is that form, where you can enter stuff and it will update itself on screen as soon as you click submit. Without a Podomo, this would be like um, partials, a lot of partials and maybe some partials as well. Fat controllers because you would have to wire up all that Ajax handling stuff yourself. I mean, a Podomo is very brief. It's just a simple small library and um, yeah, it provides you with some automatic controller action to, um, to process your uh, Ajax. Yeah, that's what I said. You would have uncountable routes that's what Kevin pointed to, so because um, you're triggering a lot of Ajax actions, and you would have to set up that route yourself. And um, yeah, again, it's in Rails. It's right now. It's not possible to test stuff like that. I mean, how can you test partials, JavaScript, um, Ajax submitting, and stuff like that? It's not possible in Apodomo. It's no problem because you have these well encapsulated components that you can test and that you can rely on. So this is just, a, that was the basic part of, about widgets. And I'm just show off a little bit. So for example, I'm using a Podomo to wrap jQuery widgets. I got a nice carousel displaying wonderful German beer. And then we have some um, autocomplete box. So I just type in some uh, letter and it will um, provide me German delicious beer. Oh, I could start again. <laughs> then you can see it in the, um, in the, in the Firebug console that um, as soon as I uh, hit uh, some buttons in the box, it will trigger the event to, um, to Rails and Apodomo will uh, respond with new content. So how did I do that? I just write autocomplete box widget derived from Apodomo widget. I have my standard display method which will render the view for that autocomplete box. Again, just some text field, some, uh, some input. I use URL for event to generate a, a triggering URL. This time I call the event typing. You could also call it attention. We got some input. And then I use um, the uh, jQuery autocomplete uh, method just to um, turn that little input box into a real autocomplete box. So what I'm doing here is I, as soon as I type in, I trigger the typing event. We all learned that we respond to events by using response to event. So I just assign my widget, hey, when you see the event typing, answer with your state search. So execute your search method. In the search method, I just, um, well, it's a simple example. I just render out some standard answer for, my, for that um, autocomplete box. Usually I would look up um, the input and then would look through the database and send back these items. But it's very simple to wrap that in a, in a widget. I mean, doing this in a Rails controller would be like a mess. So that's all I need for that autocomplete box. I also got some nice little example showing how to decouple widgets. So um, again, I have some um, imaginary Twitter application. I just type in some message, hit the tweet button, the left item will update, uh, the left, left list will update, and I can also drag and drop items to the trash bin which will uh, basically delete that tweeted item. I'm not sure, is that possible in Twitter? I think not. And will and we'll just update itself and the list. So again, this is very simple in a Podomo. I would have the trash bin widget and the list widget, and they were both rendering stuff. And in, um, in the delete method of my trash bin widget, 
I just call, it can also trigger events from the server side, not only from uh, the browser. So I call trigger update, which is a basic event, and my list widget will respond to that event by using um, response to event, look into update, and it will just call its redraw method. I, of course, I have to implement the redraw method, but it's basically very simple to have, uh, to have that kind of um, interaction between widgets. Yeah, and um, so we already learned the basic part about Apodomo. As I said, you can also have complex widgets like uh, being nested and having, uh, I don't know, like spreadsheets or real uh, desktop applications in your browser. You can have statefulness, which is very handy in some cases. You have bubbling events. That's too, um, that's too complex to, to, to show it in this uh, talk, sorry. And then we got caching from cells and we got testing from cells. And um, yeah, we are already thinking about having some generic widget repository where you got, I don't know, like widgets for jQuery, widgets for uh, prototype and stuff like that. So people would write widgets which you can use in your project instantly. So that's about it. If you're interested in that stuff, we got some great new guides online, tutorials. They are at guides.apotomo.de. Um, you can always hit me on uh, Freenode IRC. I know I'm outdated, but it, I like it. So just join the sales channel and um, have a snack with me. And uh, you can also check out Apodomo.de, which contains a lot of blog posts about that stuff. And um, yeah, that's about it. I would say questions, and then thank you. Oh, there are really questions. <laughs> the guy in the front. Uh, is it possible to do an append no. instead of a replace? <laughs> <laughs> um, repl we, we got that method replace and we got update. It's uh, out of the box, but you can also send back your, your own JavaScript. Like you say, render text and then, I don't know, like append something to something. You're free to do that yourself. It's just a handy method in a portable replace. Cool. Thank you. Uh, the guy behind the guy in the front? Nelson. Ah, uh, oh, Nelson. I need glasses. <laughs> when you did the, the event bubbling and you did a trigger, I noticed you didn't actually have to say which widget you were trying to do the new trigger. Uh, Ooh. Uh, does, it, does it send that to all of the widgets that are existing? Observe. You got me. <laughs> um, usually widgets, uh, yeah, widgets are like a tree. And if I trigger an event in some widget, it will bubble up the hierarchy to root. So the example I did will not work because both widgets are attached to root, so the list widget will not know about the triggering in the, um, in the trash bin widget. So you did a good job observing. Uh, yes, please? If I can handle this, uh, it's just like any other view. So you'd have your SAS files or CSS files, um, and you give them uh, class or ID names, and it just finds it in the CSS file. So it, it's like any other view. It's just in a different directory. So um, that's a thing we're working on. I mean, you can always put the stuff globally in your CSS file, mm -hmm. which sucks. And we're already, we're already working on some technique to, um, to have a CSS file in your widget directory. So you have your own asset, or you can also um, inline um, your CSS in the widget class using a, a, like a, I don't know, CSS, and then you can pass in a string. Okay. So you have all in one place. Oh, so you mean like if you had a repeat? Oh, so the CSS moves around with the actual cell. Oh, right. Uh, like from application to application or, or developer to developer? Yeah. So, I mean, that's basically up to the programmer of the widget, but it would be great to ship CSS information with your widget. Because otherwise, if you write some great spreadsheet and it will look uh, messy on my uh, browser, then mm -hmm. yeah, we all know that. Or even from layout to layout, I guess, also. If, uh, if it's on right. multiple pages of the same app. OK, I see what you mean. Yeah. Yeah, it'd have to be either global or packaging it with the widget somehow. Yeah. The guy in pink? Or is it white? Um, 
Well, it does not have any built-in widgets except a Podomo widget, which is a basic generic widget. So you would have to write that tab widget for jQuery yourself. That's uh, the last point on this list, a widget repository. Like you would write a tab panel widget, which I could use in my um, application. A Podomo is a framework for writing widgets. So, so if I want to use the jQuery, a jQuery widget. How would you, you mean how, how you would use a, a jQuery widget? Yeah. Uh, you would just derive a widget from a Podomo widget, and then you would um, have di different views like displaying the JavaScript code. And um, yeah, maybe for a tab panel, one, one view would be sufficient. And then you would, you have all that stuff packaged up in one directory. And you give it to me, and I use it in my project. By ex I would like a, we had we have the root widget, and then I I append your tab widget to my root, and then I maybe I could append content to your widget to your tab panel widget, and you would render it in a nice way. So that's your job for today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, there is an example online somewhere. Somebody already did that, like uh, writing a, a tab panel widget. Pretty handy. So if you click on different tabs, it will reload the content uh, on Ajax. Yes. I think we may be out of time, but uh, I wanted to mention one more thing. Uh, in my application, I was constantly having to go to the route file, routes.rb, and with Apotomo, it adds the routes dynamically, so you don't have to touch the routes file anymore if you want to do Ajax in your in your uh, application. Yeah. So I mean, it's um, it's important to note that Apodomo does no magic at all. It's very, very simple. It's just based on cells and it does add one default action to your controller. That's all. So we don't have any strange things happening behind behind your back. You can trust me. Thank you. Oh. Well, Apodomo is view layer, so usually the view layer is sitting above REST. So a Podomo doesn't care about routes, it's just for your view. So you have your REST routes, you have your REST controllers, and the controller would have to take care about which widget to render. So a Podomo doesn't handle that kind of stuff, it's just for the view. One question and then we'll be finished. Uh, Cells is running with Rails 3. Um, Yehuda did some work on it. That's very kind of him. And uh, Apodomo is, as it is based on Cells, there is no need to change anything in Apodomo. So it runs on Rails 3 as well. <coughs> Thanks, you have been a wonderful audience. <clears throat>